This is the new Ford Fiesta ST. I adored the previous generation, and in terms of price, it really represented the starting point for a proper performance car. In short, this has quite big shoes to fill, and as a consequence, this feels like a rather important test. We've come to a road that I know quite well, the Col de Vence. I've driven quite a lot of hot hatches up here over the years, including the Mark II RS. But I've also driven some pretty bad ones. So I know what a good car feels like up here, and I know what a bad car feels like up here. The first thing to talk about is this 1.5 litre turbocharged three-cylinder engine. Now, three cylinders, oh, how cute you might think. And in some ways, yes, the engine, it sounds fun joyful it doesn't sound terribly serious in a way there's still a bit of that half an air-cooled 911 thing going on with it which is great the important thing though is that it's it's just really peppy it revs keenly you certainly don't notice any lack in performance from it it's every bit as powerful and torquey as the old 1.6 force thing there's actually some very clever technology going on in this three-cylinder engine. So we've got cylinder deactivation. Now, that might sound a little bit odd. I mean, after all, in a 12-cylinder, yes, yeah, so you go down to six. Three cylinders, where do you go from there? But it goes down to two cylinders. And when you're pottering around town, you can actually just hear it. It's going to go and you know it's running on two cylinders. It cuts straight back in. And unless you're really looking for it, you wouldn't know it's there, which is very clever. You might think that a three-cylinder is going to be well, much lighter and that's the principal reason for it, but I asked them yesterday and apparently, not really, it might save about 10 kilos, but once you've had the balancer shaft in there as well, it's not a massive saving over the four-cylinder. So it's really all about character and a bit of fuel economy. At 47.1 mpg, its claimed fuel economy is certainly very impressive. The other facts and figures for this brand new ST are as follows. 197 brake horsepower, 214 pounds foot of torque, not 62 miles an hour in 6.5 seconds, and a top speed of 144 miles an hour. None of which is vastly different to the previous iteration of this car, although the curb weight has crept up to 1262 kilos, which is about 100 kilos more. On the outside, the new ST looks like a facelift of the old ST, but inside, things have taken a rather larger step forward, with Apple CarPlay and Bang Olufsen speakers, no less. So let's talk about the handling and the chassis. First off, actually, let's talk about tyres first because we've got a Michelin Supersport tyre on here. And that's quite a brave thing in a car like this because there's a potential for it to be all grip and no fun. And they did say it was quite a tricky thing getting the balance right, but they have got the balance just right. Around town, this car, it's still quite firm. It's nothing like as bouncy as the old car was though, which is a good thing. But it's on a road such as the Col de Vence where this car really shines and it really does shine. The steering is very quick, it's 14% quicker than the old car. It's almost sort of Ferrari quick in its reactions and initially that can feel quite odd but the more you get stuck into this car the more you realise it just works. Importantly too we've still got a manual gearbox and it's a really good shift, I think. In the old ST, which I ran one for a year, so I know it quite well, you always sat just a little bit too high. This seat is not exactly slammed onto the floor, but it's better, much, much better. And you've still got those fantastic bolsters which really hold you in place. And that's important, as we'll see in a bit. If you want all the toys like this car, then go for the ST3 which is yours for £21,500, but you can have a more sparsely specced ST1 from as little as £19,000. I haven't given you any prices in dollars as, unfortunately, America won't be getting the new ST. Sorry. Moving swiftly onwards, the performance figures and even the price are remarkably similar to a Ford Icon, the first generation Focus RS. That car also boasted something that the little Fiesta can now have as part of an optional £850 performance pack, a Quaif limited slip differential. As you go up through the mode, so sport, and then I'm gonna put it into track, the steering gets a bit more weight, and then you come into a corner like this, 
and you just feel the rear wheel hanging in the air and then if you get on the power you can feel the diff tuck the nose in so you keep that rear wheel sort of up in the air it's such a fun feeling hot hatches are just great part of the reason for this fun feeling is the stiffness of the rear axle which has some rather clever suspension there is obviously all sorts of technology on this car but there's one thing that's very specific to this and in fact ford has patented it force vectoring rear springs which um, well, sound pretty cool for a start, and they're all to do with a twist beam rear axle. Now, normally you would have a Watts linkage to try and keep the thing secure, so in cornering it doesn't, well, twist really. They've done it through the springs, which saves 10 kilos over a Watts linkage system. And instead of the springs just being straight up and down like that, they curve, sort of banana shape like that, so that when the forces are loaded onto it, well, they keep the axle better located. That not only saves weight, it, they say it also allows them to soften off the bushes at the front as well, helping NVH. All round, clever stuff. So after a few hours on the Col de Vos, is this a good car or a bad car? I think you can probably guess the answer. This latest guise of the Fiesta ST is definitely a good car. It has matured, which could be construed as a bad thing in a hot hatch, but what I mean by that is that with the improvements to the interior and infotainment, the little Fiesta offers all the technology you could realistically want or expect in a much bigger, more expensive car. It might not be very glitzy, but it crams a phenomenal number of features into its diminutive footprint. Performance has got rather grown up and serious too, but crucially, without losing the previous generation's sense of fun. The sharpness and tenacity it exhibits in corners is tremendous, yet it still retains that innate hot hatch jollity and adjustability. Perhaps, needless to say, the performance pack feels like an essential purchase because of that limited slip diff. In fact, with that in place, I don't think too many would complain if you replace the letters ST with RS. So yes, this is a very good car indeed. One of the best, in fact regardless of price.